Once you've installed your website, you'll want to enable some additional functionality and the way that you do that with Drupal is through modules. So let's go ahead and look at the list of modules we have here. The modules you're going to want to enable will differ depending on what you want to build with your website, whether it's a personal site or a research group site or a lab website. So I'm just going to walk through what some of these modules are and what they do. Um, the content access module is great in terms of limiting access to various user groups and roles. The administration menu, you'll want to generally enable that. That gives you a quick ability to access most of the administrative paths on the site. I'm not going to enable all of these modules here, but and I'm just going to highlight a few of them. But the Biblio module is a module that lets you set up bibliographic references, it lets you import and export in a lot of standard bibliographic formats. Most of the content modules are enabled by default. A couple to highlight here is content copy, which lets you import and export content types. And then there's content permissions, which is if you want more granular control over the fields within a certain content type. Chaos Tools is typically a it's just a suite of modules that provides helper functions for a number of required modules. Um, you'll see that it's required by a number of different modules here. So it typically gets enabled when you enable some of these other modules that provide functionality on their own. Some of the core modules that you may want to look at is the book module, which is good for creating a hierarchy of pages. The profile module, if you want to have user profiles, you'll probably want to enable search. A couple that you don't want to enable would be statistics. There are better ways of collecting statistics, specifically Google Analytics, which is a little bit further down in this list. The core statistics module really slows down your site. The other one you don't need to worry about on the Stanford Sites platform is update status. All updates are pushed out centrally on the server, so on a site-by-site -site basis you really don't need to worry about that. Calendar and date and date API, a lot of these modules are required by other modules that provide additional functionality. If you want to create custom content types that have date fields in them, such as an event or a, a speaker series, etc., you would want to enable the date modules. Stanford Events Importer. So one nice thing with this version of Drupal is that it will list, not only list the dependencies, but you'll see when we go to enable this, that these dependencies, it will prompt you to enable these dependencies. So you don't need to go through and check off all of these different dependencies. Feeds is a module that allows you to import data from an external source. So the Stanford Events Importer will import events into your Drupal site from events.stanford.edu and it uses the feeds module to do that. One thing to note about some of these modules, feeds for instance and image cache which we'll talk about in a minute, is that some of them have administrative UIs. The user interface modules will, you can disable those once you've got the, once you've got the feed set up or once you've got the core module set up, you don't need to have the administrative UI. That'll improve your performance a little bit. Image handling modules, you typically want to enable image API and one of these two toolkits. There are pros and cons to these two different toolkits and we'll cover that in a different screencast. The image cache module is great for handling and automatically resizing, scaling, and cropping images. Again, with the user interface modules, you want to enable image cache UI. Global Redirect is a great module for search engine optimization. It will take content such as node 123 and redirect it to your actual path. And so it stops search bots from seeing, thinking that your site has duplicate content. 
path redirect will automatically, if you change the path of a given node or page, it will automatically create a redirect, which is pretty nice. Google Analytics, we uh, would enable that typically when once you've launched the site, you probably don't worry about analytics when you're first setting up your site. This IT services module just provides some helper functions and uh, allows, enforces some permissions, and so you don't really need to worry about this. You can't enable or disable it. We have View Slideshow, which will allow you to create slideshow content from views. It's a pretty nice module. And the WebAuth module allows people to log in and out with their Senate ID. So I'm going to go ahead and save that, and you'll see it prompt for these modules, which is great. And yes, I want to enable those. And you'll see here in enabling the WebAuth module that you get a number of new roles created and then you get a number of new workgroup mappings. So we'll cover the WebAuth options in a different screencast.